Before we begin this video, I wanted to invite you to follow us on our Facebook page Hurricane Info, where we'll be sharing information and updates on tropical cyclones throughout the hurricane season. We also have an Instagram page, you can find us there as Info Hurricane, and you can follow us to stay informed. Thank you all very much for your support. A warm greeting. Today is Sunday, June 8, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I would like to provide an update on tropical activity in the Atlantic. I'll talk a bit about why we haven't seen any tropical development since the hurricane season began. We'll also be analyzing how sea surface temperatures have changed in the Niño 3.4 region and in the Atlantic, and what changes, if any, have occurred in the forecast for tropical activity expected this year in the Atlantic. What's important is that currently, there are no areas of interest for tropical development across the entire Atlantic. Meanwhile, the situation is completely different in the eastern Pacific, where we've already seen the formation of three tropical cyclones. A few days ago, Tropical Storm Alvin formed, which did not directly impact Mexico. Today, Tropical Storm Barbara has developed south of Michoacan and Colima. We also have Tropical Depression 3 of the season, which is expected to soon become Tropical Storm Cosme. In fact, it is expected that one to two additional tropical cyclones could form over the next several days and weeks. So, it's important for residents in southern and western Mexico to stay alert to the tropics in the coming days. It's important to talk about tropical activity in the eastern Pacific because it is one of the main reasons we have not yet seen development in the Atlantic. The next few weeks are expected to remain relatively quiet. If you recall, a few days ago we mentioned that a favorable phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, MJO, would be moving over the eastern Pacific and the western Caribbean, and that this could create favorable conditions for tropical development. That's precisely what we're seeing, and one of the reasons why there is so much activity in the eastern Pacific. But with the arrival of this favorable MJO phase, it's the Eastern Pacific that is benefiting. So, in this case, it appears that we won't be seeing cyclone formation in the Gulf of Mexico or the Western Caribbean. At least that's what we expect while the Eastern Pacific remains active. I also want to take a moment to caution against the American model runs, which have been projecting the formation of a tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Mexico or the Western Caribbean for several weeks now. However, Keep in mind that the American model often produces false alarms for tropical development early in the season. This means that, for now, we should not focus on model runs showing hurricane formation in the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico, as tropical activity seems to be concentrated in the eastern Pacific. Still, the formation of a Central American gyre is expected, which could bring heavy rain to Central America and Southern Mexico from the middle to the end of this week. So, it's important to stay alert for possible flooding. Another reason why we haven't seen tropical activity in the Atlantic so far is the continued presence of Saharan dust concentrations moving across the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. These particles create unfavorable conditions for the formation of tropical cyclones. However, remember that this is completely normal, especially when we look historically at the period from June to July, when average Saharan dust concentrations between the Caribbean and Africa increase, peaking around late July and early August. That's why we expect the presence of Saharan dust to continue over the coming weeks and at least for the next two months. As you can see in the graph, it's not until mid-August and September that the concentrations drop to levels that allow for the start of cyclone formation between the Caribbean and Africa. So the question is, what can we expect for the rest of the season? And is this a sign of how active or inactive the Atlantic hurricane season may be? The answer is, this is totally normal. Remember that in June, tropical activity in the Atlantic is extremely low and it's not really until early August when tropical activity typically starts to increase, leading up to the peak of the season, from mid-August through early October. In fact, on average, the first tropical storm in the Atlantic forms around June 20th, and this development typically happens in the Gulf of Mexico, the Western Caribbean, or the Southeastern United States. Given all the activity happening in the Eastern Pacific, and that it's projected to continue in the coming weeks, long-range models show a very quiet Atlantic at least through June 23rd. So for now, we expect the next two weeks to remain extremely quiet in the Atlantic, while activity in the eastern Pacific remains very active. Now let's talk about how sea surface temperature anomalies have changed in both the Niño 3.4 region and the main development region in the Atlantic. Remember that yellow and red colors represent above normal sea surface temperatures, while blue colors represent below normal temperatures. If we first analyze the Niño 3.4 region in the Pacific, you'll see that temperatures are currently near normal which indicates that we are still in ENSO neutral conditions. Model projections for the next few months suggest that neutral conditions will continue at least through the end of the year. This means that the absence of El Niño could create favorable conditions for tropical development in the Atlantic, since it reduces wind shear across the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and southwestern Atlantic. 
So at least when it comes to ENSO, it appears that the conditions are favorable for increased tropical activity during this year. On the other hand, we do have some good news. The main development region in the Atlantic currently has sea surface temperatures that are slightly warmer than normal, or actually, quite close to normal. This is definitely favorable, because compared to last year, this can be a limiting factor in the formation and strengthening of cyclones. When we look at the next graph, the blue line shows how temperatures have varied in the main development region. Since early May, warming has been fairly slow, and we are currently at near normal values, very different from what was recorded during 2023 and 2024. We see a similar trend in the Caribbean Sea, where since mid-May, and very likely due to Saharan dust, the waters have been cooling. Although the average temperatures are still slightly above normal, you can see that they are basically near normal and far from what we observed over the last two years. In the Gulf of Mexico, while it is slightly warmer than normal, the good news is that it is significantly cooler than what we recorded in 2024. So overall, sea surface temperatures in the main development region are only slightly above normal, and this could be a factor that helps limit cyclone activity somewhat this year. Additionally, something very important is that the subtropical Atlantic has temperatures that are significantly warmer than normal, and this can create atmospheric stability across the tropical Atlantic. That can make it harder for tropical cyclones to form. What's most surprising is that when we compare with last year, we can clearly see that this year's temperatures are much cooler than those recorded in 2024. So, while ENSO neutral conditions may support a more active Atlantic season, on the other hand, near normal sea surface temperatures could work in our favor this year by potentially limiting activity, perhaps preventing a repeat of the very active season we had in 2024. Meanwhile, projections for the peak of the season continue to indicate that the African monsoon trough should be quite active in the coming months. Represented by the green and blue colors in this image, this can lead to strong tropical waves emerging from Africa, which can serve as seeds for hurricane formation. However, it's also important to note that the European model projects that at times, we may have fairly favorable conditions in the eastern Pacific, which could compete with Atlantic activity. So even though we expect strong tropical waves to emerge from Africa, at least the conditions won't be extremely favorable for their development and strengthening once they move into the Caribbean. It is precisely for these reasons that the latest projection from the European model is forecasting the formation of 13 tropical storms, when the average is 14. It also projects 8 hurricanes, compared to the normal of 7, and an accumulated cyclone energy, ACE, about 10% more active than normal. So, at least according to the European model, the Atlantic hurricane season is expected to be near or slightly above average. Overall, this aligns with forecasts from agencies and specialized groups. So, in summary, I can tell you that we continue to project that this hurricane season will be slightly more active than normal, mainly due to neutral ENSO conditions and strong tropical waves emerging from Africa. However, the good news is that the tropical Atlantic is not as warm as it was last year. Well, that's all for this video. Later this afternoon or evening, I'll be sharing an update on tropical activity in the Eastern Pacific. To all my followers in the United States, Eastern Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean, I'll be keeping you informed whenever we have any potential threats of tropical development. For now, everything is calm. This is an excellent time to review our emergency plans and get ready for the peak of the season. I invite you to like this video. And to stay informed throughout the rest of the season, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. That's it for now. I hope everyone has a great start to the week. See you next time.